you so much, man. I really appreciate it. It's always nice to hear uh, fun things you've done. So thank you for, for doing that. Uh, on that same note, I also like to give a thank you to uh, to Jack West and Joe Alessi for inviting me to be a part of this. Uh, this is truly awesome. I'm ashamed that I didn't know that it existed uh, until about two months ago, but I'm extremely happy to be uh, to be a part of it. Uh, while I'm throwing out thank yous, I don't they may not be with us, but Representative Houlihan, awesome fellow airmen, thank you uh, to her for her service, and Representative Davis for for making more airmen. Uh, it, it's truly awesome. Uh, you'll see if 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 you ever run into an airman, we're we're a proud bunch, and, and we like to see more of us come about. So awesome. Uh, but the focus of why of why I'm here, first of all, to say congratulations uh, to the winners of the, the Congressional App Challenge for the from their respective districts. I think it's awesome that you're involved. And I'd like to give you, if you will indulge me, uh, just a few tips that I think could help you uh, continue to be successful. Clear you're already on a good path. And I'd be happy to maybe give you something that, I, that may be good. So tip number one, uh, tip number one I'll share with you is always know who you're talking to. So, you know, context is everything. So for me to, to just spit, spit words at your ideas doesn't mean too much. So I'd like to just tell you a little bit about my background. Um, I'm in a very, very rare group of people. Uh, my uh, parents were both educators. My dad was an AP computer science teacher as well as uh, AP calculus uh, when I was in high school and, and continued that. Uh, so I had a, a slightly different vantage point of what uh, computing was and what coding was because it was just a natural part of my everyday life. Uh, literally speaking, it, it put food on the table. Uh, for most of you, I'm guessing that wasn't the case. Uh, so kudos to you for your curiosity and your your completely, you know, I think self-driven interest to drive you to be a part of this. I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, I'd also, you know, have to, to have to mention the fact that uh, I'm in the Air Force and I love that as well. And thankfully, the Air Force is a great place to marry up an interest in cyber and also an interest in uh, which is huge. So I noticed that some of the uh, apps that were generated were you're trying to support your fellow students, uh, you're trying to make things a little bit better. And I think that really at the core, uh, that's what we're trying to do in the military. That's kind of the, the core of our service. So you guys are already on a good track to, to helping out the country. Uh, and, and you probably didn't even know it yet, but, but kudos to you. So I have to be really, really honest with you guys. I was a little bit nervous and gals, I was a little bit nervous uh, uh, for multiple reasons. I had multi-pronged levels of nervous with the first one being, oh my gosh, uh, I'm gonna give my name and, and face to all these people that, that do development work. If they wanna hack me or go against me, I, I, I won't even stand a chance. I mean, these dudes, uh, these folks are really talented and here I am talking to them. I hope I don't say anything wrong. Uh, but then after seeing the, the, the group and the, the amount of effort that you put into the apps and the, the nature and the feel of really trying to be helpful, they kind of put that, it kind of put that, that concern a little bit at ease. Uh, it's a, a bit dangerous that I scroll through your submissions when I did, uh, because as a cyber dude myself, uh, so full background, I was actually a political science major undergrad uh, and then did a master's in security uh, later on after working it in the Air Force. Um, I was just completely dumbfounded and pretty humbled by uh, a lot of the winning submissions uh, that I saw just from your one to, to three minute video clip. So uh, that's awesome. The, the American in me says, I'm happy that you folks are part of our, you know, that you guys are on, are, are on our team. The airman in me says, man, it'd be really cool if, uh, if we could tap into that talent. And I think that's a, a, a super awesome opportunity. So uh, what we need, we collectively as American citizens, and I think this has already been referenced by a couple of folks, uh, is we need to close the gap. We need to narrow the the uh, the deficit of computing and IT jobs that we have in our in our country. Uh, clearly, you folks are on the right path. So maybe I'm preaching to the wrong ones, but I would say uh, tell your friends, bring folks along with you because that'll help make our job uh, that much easier. Uh, the reason that we need you to be good, uh, we need you to start which you already have, and we need you to be good. Uh, kind of goes to my background a little bit, which uh, Ms. Gupta was was kind enough to to tell you. Uh, I've worked in defensive cyber operations, I've worked in some cyber operations, and the, the key thing between both of those, uh, the reason that both of those roles are just opposite sides of the same coin, they're all based on how good of a developer uh, you are, okay? So if you're a good developer and I do defensive cyber operations, you make my job really easy. If you're an okay developer, then you make my job a little bit harder because if there are mistakes in your code, they flush out as vulnerabilities uh, to bad guys. Uh, and like I said, unfortunately, or fortunately, the opposite, the opposite side of that coin is that's also the enablement for offensive cyber, offensive cyber operations as well. So what I would really like the most, and if I can give you a message or some motivation for, for tip number two, it's to really, really hone and perfect your craft because you are the reason that 
cyber defense exists, that cyber offense exists, and that this entire infrastructure uh, uh, is, is an environment, is a domain for us to for us to exist in. So thank you for that. And again, I'm super happy that you're on the right path. So I'll just pass you a few more things before I leave. Uh, and this is this can apply to you as a as a future developer. This can apply to you as a future business person, as a future artist, uh, whatever you count yourself as. Uh, I would 100% suggest that you continue to both feed your technical side and your technical development, but also feed your creative side. So if you decide to be a developer, then I absolutely need you to be uh, very, very good at your data sanitization. Don't, don't make holes in your code out in your memory allocation. Don't leave easy targets. Uh, ever do another bit of development again and someone asks you to do this challenge and, and you see it, uh, I hope at the very least, it gave you a perspective of how to be a better user because clearly no, no matter no matter what users are always the weakest link in our security chain so if you're dev be good if you're just a user and you don't de develop another thing be knowledgeable um and regardless keep being creative and keep putting time into it and in the process of doing that i'll give you just a, a few more tips before i before i sign off uh the first one is, is super fun be extremely selfish all right be very selfish be extremely selfish with your time and where you choose to spend it and hold yourself accountable to, to when you're doing what you're doing. Whether you're playing video games and you're trying to get better and you know you deem that a successful use of time, awesome. Or whether you're pounding your head uh, against the tail, one little bit of code to work, realize that you're scoping yourself and your talents to one thing and you, you never get that time back. So be selfish with your time. Don't do things that are, don't do things that are silly. If you find yourself in a conversation with someone and you think that it may be a slight waste of time, I'm hoping I don't start to see the participants dip as I make this comment, uh, and you start to feel that maybe it's not an effective use of your time, okay, good, it's still staying the same, uh, then don't run away from it. Recoup that time by being engaging, and this will actually kind of lead me to my second point, which is as much as, as, much as you can, as many opportunities as you get, uh, use people, absolutely, use them, use them for, for all that you can. Uh, and what I really mean by that, is engage and get the perspective of others and incorporate it into your own. Whether keep the good stuff, keep the bad stuff as the illustration of what not to do. So this applies to your academics, applies to your social sense. Uh, be a citizen. Don't be as as was previously mentioned. Uh, don't be the the coder in the basement with the hoodie on, you know, eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew. Um, uh, to be honest, I've, I've seen the real life version of that in previous jobs, and I absolutely love those guys because they're so good at what they do. But I'm also happy that we're starting to break the mold. It doesn't have to be that. Uh, if you choose to make it that, then fine, but it doesn't have to be. And that's awesome. Uh, in the process of using people, that's a, that, that goes multiple ways. Um, you need to find mentors, find people, and this is, a, this is an airman talking, find people who have done what you want to do or have interest in what you want to do and latch onto them. So the initial poll question that, that everyone was asked to participate in was with the hope that you'll future classmates. Uh, I would highly suggest that you scroll down the list of winning apps and, and just take mental note of those names or, you know, social media is pretty big these days, I'm told. Uh, connect with the folks that you see from whatever state that have been successful in the same thing that you're doing. OK, that's that's helpful. That's how you build a network. It takes a network to defeat a network. That's how you start to build yours. And that just does nothing but make you better. Uh, as you do that, you have peer mentors. Uh, eventually, you're going to have the opportunity to find uh, more senior mentors, whether they be senior in age or just senior in experience, and latch on to that too. And again, this is still falling under the tip of, you know, use people. Don't be afraid to engage with people. Uh, but then also don't be afraid to give back. And I think what you'll see is once you've received those benefits from, uh, from, your, from, your, uh, from your peers and you receive those benefits from folks senior to you, uh, it'll be bursting. You'll be bursting at the seams to give it back. Uh, and the very last tip, which uh, which I'll tell you is completely uh, my favorite, it is be lazy, all right? Uh, at all things and all things, you should be looking for the most efficient way to accomplish what you're doing. Uh, if you're writing code and you find yourself repeating with little variation, the same few lines of code because you refuse to use uh, a loop or you don't want to use uh, the appropriate data structure or function to get what you need to done, uh, to get what you need to get done efficiently, uh, then you're making mistakes. Don't do that, all right? And the grand scheme of being lazy, things that help that are knowing what you're good at. Don't be afraid to not be good at something, pursue it. But the, the thing that is gonna be really helpful is when you see where your star of abilities points and wherever that may be, uh, follow it, okay? Because that's when you breed efficiency. That's when you're more than likely, if you're good at something, you're gonna keep, and that cycle is just gonna feed itself. And that's what allows you to do things simply that other people take a lot of time to do or a lot of, 
manual grunt work labor to do. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want to put you in that mental space. Uh, as a as a leader in the Air Force, I, I need the, the folks that work around me for me uh, and, and also the folks that I work for to constantly be looking at better ways to do things. And that applies easily in life. You know it inherently, uh, but then it manifests itself 100% when you're coding because you don't want to waste time recoding something or, or making life harder for yourself. Uh, with that, I, I'll, I'll stay on for a bit. If there are any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the drop them in the Q and A, and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, but again, be selfish, be lazy, use people. Okay, look for mentors, be efficient, and be very very careful with your time. And those things you set yourself up well for continued success. Again, you you've already you've conquered the app challenge for your respective districts, but you set yourself up well to be uh, a citizen of the citizen of the country, a citizen of the world. You happen to keep tech path. That's awesome too, because uh, I, I like to consider myself on a good day nerd. Uh, you get to be part of the nerd family, so that's cool too. Uh, so uh, again, thank you to uh, thank you to to Jack and thank you to Joe. I'm, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Uh, I'll still be on for a little bit, so if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, more than happy to to take them. But otherwise, thanks for letting me be here, and uh, congratulations to everybody. All right. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for uh, for for joining us. It was really great and some incredible insights there. I've got a question for you as we wait for some others to come in in the Q and A chat. Obviously, service has been a, a major part of your career, and you you hinted at this, hoping to try to get some students involved in that. If you had to pitch um, why uh, you know some of these high school students who are looking to um, you know looking at colleges and trying to figure out what they want to do professionally. You had to pitch them on on why they maybe should become an airman and, and what kind of future would exist there. Uh, what would you tell them? Uh, well, that depends on how much time you got. I don't know how much time <laughs> you got, but uh, I would say you know first and foremost, this is you know I'm, a, I'm a, I, I love my service. I'm not speaking on behalf of the entire Air Force uh, with this comment or my other ones, uh, but I can say from a very personal sense and from a, uh, the sense who I think has shared interest with many of our participants, uh, the pitch is easy. Uh, Airmen, we love education. We love learning. We love putting um, folks in position to continue to develop themselves and, and get skills. Uh, in case you're not aware, we are, we are, we've made changes within uh, the military to make it more palatable for folks to pop in for a few years, uh, get experience uh, that they wouldn't otherwise get. Like the, you know, many of the jobs I've had that I'm proudest of uh, would be illegal for me to do as a civilian. So that's really, that's really cool. You have opportunities to do those things. You have opportunities to have those those skills and that talent development paid for. Uh, and I would find a hard reason, you know, unless you're, if you just know that you want to be in the, uh, in, in the coding realm completely, because we will ask you to do some things that are outside the coding realm at times, because that's, that's what we do. Unless you just know you want to be there 100% and you don't want to go anywhere else. If you have some flex in your interest, then I would absolutely uh, give a good recommendation for, for Air Force life, both for the culture and the opportunities. Awesome. I have another question that came in here. Um, it's about uh, how has the importance of computer science changed in the Air Force um, over your time there, or maybe over the last fifteen or twenty years? Oh wow. So the uh, so and I'll, I'll try to be brief. When I joined, I was a comm officer. So my primary responsibility was you know making sure the network, the computers work, making sure the land worked, but also making sure the radios were good and the, the we also had satellite. Um, uh, SATCOM that fell under us and some other stuff. And over the 15 years that I've been in, it's gone from being a, hey, we fix your printers, we fix your phones, we we fix your, you know, your communications to now we're an operational, we fight, we fight in the cyber domain, we defend the cyber domain. Uh, the importance of computer science has really always been there. There's always been a place for the computer scientists. Uh, but now what we're really seeing is uh, the degree is awesome, right? We, we love it when people have the degree. But the folks who are doing the most nitty gritty and I would say exciting, uh, the, the only job I've had where I wake up in the night thinking about the mission and thinking about what I have to do the next day and being a little bit concerned to go, you know, to go punch a keyboard. Uh, the folks that are really doing the mission that, that are in the thick of it then, for the most part, were not college grads. They were folks that were extremely talented. They were folks who worked extremely hard and I have no doubt would be able to go through that curriculum. But for whatever reason, they got into their respective services and we put them through an extreme extremely grueling training process to get them to the point where they could do that. So computer science as a concept has been equally as important. Computer science as a degree uh, has, is, it, there's, there's, there's debate. I'll, I'll just say there, there's debate because the people who are talented and passionate will show themselves regardless. 
Awesome. I, I'm not sure how much more time you have. I do have another few questions that have come in here if you if you want to take those. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm on your time. Happy to be here. Awesome. So Ali asked, um, how is AI being implemented in the Air Force to advance efficiency? Oh, wow. So I wish that I could give an educated answer on that. I know that it's there. I know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have a uh, a good bit of teams working both with private sector uh, and with our academic partners to develop that, but I do not have any specific uh, examples of the application. Uh, but I'm happy to, to say confidently that, that it's there and worked. All right, and I've got a, I've got a question that's a little bit away from uh, computer science here. Uh, All right. Arush asks, uh, do you fly planes? Man, so uh, I, 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 I don't. And if you wanna fly planes, please don't let the fact that I don't fly planes stop you. Uh, I, I was extremely lucky to be part of a, a, a cadet program when I was in uh, when I was in high school that allowed me to do a, a lot of uh, a lot of flying, and it taught me that hey, I'm actually not that big of a fan of flight, but I love the culture of the I love the culture of the Air Force. So uh, because of that, I, I made the decision that that I would go in as a as a non pilot. But that's that's extremely lucky because it's it's been it's been wonderful. Uh, there's so many opportunities that, that I've gotten. There's so many opportunities that are out there actually now for you know for all of you folks uh, to include you know programs like you know JRTC or programs like uh, there's a, a nonprofit computer science for all that is doing a, a full a full force effort to say hey you know there's STEM jobs there are a lot of STEM jobs out there and if you want to fly that's cool. Uh, but institutions like the ones I mentioned are there to make sure across the country there's more opportunities for you to do computer science, uh, AP computer science uh, in, in one form or another, or get to do cool cyber uh, activities. So did not fly, but uh, there's uh, so many other opportunities to, to serve and be an airman. Awesome. I've got just one more question for cool. you. Well, first, I've got a comment. Um, uh, some of the, uh, we had a team in the audience who wanted to say that they, they felt like they learned so much from your insights, experience, and tips, and they wanted to thank you for, for joining us today. Certainly, we echo, we echo that sentiment here at the App Challenge. It's really been um, incredible to have you, and you know, it's, it's, it's great to, to be working with you on this. Um, I, had a question, I had a question from uh, Bryce who asked, uh, you know, we've talked a little bit about the past when it comes to computer science. Um, how do you think computer science field will change in the near future? Oh, so... Uh, and this is truly my, my personal opinion, the uh, computer science, again, as a, as, a, as a formal discipline has, you know, and it was mentioned before, and I'm happy they mentioned it. Once you know one language, once you know more, one platform and how to manipulate it, uh, you, you don't know them all automatically, but, but you can learn them all. Uh, I think the, the barrier that we have now is folks that feel like they have to be in this paradigm of, of formalized education to get to the goals that they want to do in, in cyber or in computing in general, and I would say that the, the change will be that, that that's just not the case. Uh, there are too many avenues of, of learning, whether it be YouTube, Coursera, uh, any number of other you know mass online learning uh, things that will allow you to learn that snippet of development that you want to do. Hey, I know I just want to be a user experience designer. I know that that's a thing that, that I want to do and I'm interested in, uh, and I'm pretty sure that if I'm good at it and I have a good artistic eye for it, I can do it. Well, guess what? You can have a, a program that's specifically designed to do that. So when you go to a, an interview for a, for a position, uh, there's me and there's, you know, and I've specialized in, in user experience uh, design. And there's someone who has a, an awesome, awesome comp sci degree. We're kind of on equal footing because it, it, it makes sense, to, you know, potentially for you to hire me uh, based on the specific set of skills I've had. That's, you know, computer science as a formal program is awesome for credibility uh, as representative who had mentioned you know even in her day-to-day -day decision making there's not a day that she doesn't fall back on her engineering uh engineering background and i 100 think that the systems design approach that you get from computer science is the same but the change will be you can still you can still eat you can still work and be uh an asset to to a company and to the to the country even if you don't have that Awesome. Uh, well, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lampkin, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you for your remarks. It's, it's really been uh, great to, to hear from you. And uh, I know you've been inspiring students, inspiring us as well. So thank you for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks again for the invite. I, I love yeah. it.